Hadouken! What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below, smash a like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's all about fabric parts versus plastic parts. What's the difference? Which one should I use? Why should I use them? What choice should I make? And what choice should you make? Because it all depends on different factors. So we're going to look into some of those factors today. Now we all know that each part of the plant deserves its own attention. Whether it's topping stems for the best structure or trimming excess fan leaves to stimulate growth, there are a lot of established practices for ensuring your plants grow healthy and happy. And when it comes to the roots, we all know the bigger the roots, the better the fruits, right? And nowadays, there are a lot of different containers on the market when it comes to plant pots. You got a lot of different stuff that you can use. I'm talking fabric, plastic, terracotta, clay. You can use an old wheelbarrow, a bucket. You can do a lot of different stuff. But a plant pot does not only just support the plant and hold it together. It also reacts with the root zone in different ways. As the root zone is one of the most critical elements of the plant's psychology and physiology and just its entire makeup, it's super important to understand how the different containers may affect your plant's growth. And as as you probably noticed by now, it's a heated debate in the industry whether you should use fabric pots or plastic pots. And the thing is, there's no right or wrong answer, but there are a lot of factors that you need to consider based on your setup. And in today's episode, we're going to break all that down for you guys. But before we do, huge shout out to everyone that's supporting on Patreon, man. Big ups to all you guys. We really do appreciate your love and support. If you guys aren't supporting on Patreon, head on over there, man. Join up with the ICANN VIP Bean Club. We got free packs going out to all VIPs. We got some exclusive that just touched down and you guys have already started to get them. So man, you guys definitely are missing out if you are part of the fam. So big ups to the ICANN fam. And guys, check out Diesel Dog Clothing. We got some dope designs that we're working on and we put on there. Hopefully you guys like them. If you guys want to support, just cop a hoodie, cop a t-shirt. Diesel dog clothing is lit. If it ain't diesel, I don't want it, dog. And over there, it's always 420. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode. <laughs> Yes, guys, now one of the most important things that you need to consider when it comes to plant pots and choosing the right pot is the soil moisture level. So let's call that number one, soil moisture levels. When it comes to growing plants, understanding the ideal moisture content of a medium is a little bit of a learned art. But that said, a lot of beginner growers tend to overwater their plants and overwatering can be fatal. It can straight up kill your plant. So that said, while it is important to understand moisture levels in different mediums, to be a successful grower, the type of container that you use will also greatly impact how well that soil retains water or drains the water. So let's look at the fabric pots first. Now because fabric pots are super porous, they dry out a lot quicker than plastic pots. That fast drying time often keeps beginner growers from overwatering, which is a good thing. And it also reduces issues with pathogens like root rot, which can also be fatal. Now let's flip things around and look at the plastic pots. Now some cultivators actually enjoy the fact that plastic pots don't dry out as quickly. That slower drying rate reduces the number of times that you gotta water. Not only do the plastic pots help to conserve water and nutrients, but they also reduce the overall labor that you need to water your plants. You don't need to be in there every day watering. If you got a lot of plants, that can become tedious. So in general, plastic pots dry out a lot slower and fabric pots dry out a lot faster. Now let's look at number two. I'm gonna call this the root growth patterns. This just means the way that your roots grow. I'm sure that you know that healthy roots are critical to the overall productivity of your plants. You want good plants? You gotta have good roots. That's why dynamico, mycorrhizal inoculants are so important just to help to build that root network but when you got issues with the roots you probably ain't using dynamico you probably just in taking care of your plants properly you don't notice it until things are too late a lot of the time if you got a problem with the roots you just can't see down there and it's only when the plant throws up funny stuff with the leaves you're like oh my gosh i got a problem and at that point deadly issues like fusarium wilt are already deeply set into your plants and that shit's fatal so again to properly care for and troubleshoot your garden it's critical to know how fabric pots and plastic pots affect overall growth patterns. So again, let's look at fabric pots first. Because they're extremely breathable, a lot of fabric pots allow air to pass freely into the root zone and out of the root zone. Once those roots make contact with the air or they get to the walls of those fabric pots, they literally stop growing. And that's actually called air pruning. So by keeping the main roots from growing too long, air pruning stimulates the even growth of the smaller roots. So where you got a main root, you got those little roots that grow off of it, almost like uh, smaller roots, secondary roots almost, that, that, that form the network. Now 
Now air pruning is a really beneficial side effect of one of those fabric pots. So by actually keeping those main roots from growing too long, air pruning stimulates the even growth of those smaller roots. So now that you got a wider root network, you can get more nutrient and water uptake to the plant. But with plastic pots on the other hand, plants tend to produce few offshoots from the roots, but instead those roots grow really long. And when they aren't air pruned, roots tend to wrap themselves around the bottom of the plastic pots. If you have a transplanted out of a plastic pot, you may have noticed at the bottom the roots sort of start to run around like a circle at the bottom of the pot that's exactly what happens now transplanting out of plastic pots is a lot easier than transplanting out of fabric pots sometimes i just straight up cut the fabric pots open and get it out of there because i've stressed plants trying to transplant out of fabric pots before now the third fact you guys need to consider is aeration of the root zone a lot of growers fail to appreciate just how important fresh air is to maintaining living organisms within the soil especially if you're in an organic or a living soil setup you gotta pay careful attention to what keeps those vital microorganisms alive. So let's look at the fabric pots again. Because those fabric pots are breathable, they provide immense aeration for the root zone of your plants. With living soil, that airflow is critical for maintaining healthy bacteria and fungi that in turn help the roots in better absorbing nutrients. So it works out good. With plastic pots on the other hand, air can only penetrate the root zone from the open top and from some of those small drain holes at the bottom. Now while that breathability may not be great, plastic pots actually protect microorganisms in a completely other way. And this is is pretty important guys because bacteria and fungi and living soil can die when that soil totally dries out or they'll just go dormant because plastic pots don't dry out as quickly they provide a bigger buffer for the moisture content in those living soil setups and they protect the living microorganisms as well so the fact that things don't dry out as much can actually be a pro especially if you're in a living soil setup it all depends on what you're looking for now one of the last factors you need to consider is that overhead cost and the ease of use and this is important for a lot of growers aside from the direct influences on the growth patterns of your plants other considerations are definitely the cost how expensive is it to buy a bunch of pots because in the end if you can't afford a certain pot or it just doesn't work well with the overall setup then why would you consider it a lot of folks say that fabric pots are a lot easier to use than plastic pots some of those fabric pots got handles so you can hold them you can lift them up and move around the grow room and because they're collapsible and fabric and soft they can literally just be folded up and stored away when they're not in use some people even wash and reuse their fabric pots they throw them in the washing machine and they get them nice and clean and they bring them back out for another grow run. Personally, I'm not sure how I feel about throwing a dirty fabric pot in my washing machine, you know? So I guess it depends on you. Now, plastic pots on the other hand are a lot less expensive than fabric pots a lot of the time, especially for newer growers who face those exuberant overhead costs So you gotta buy a light, a tent, a carbon filter, all that stuff. That's why you need to check out Mars Hydro. They got some great carbon filters, grow tents, setups and lights, everything that you need. Use that discount code ICANTHC and I'm gonna show you some of their fire at the end of the video, so look out for that. So for a lot of growers, the price can be an important factor, especially if you gotta buy a lot of pots. Now with the plastic pots as well, a lot of growers like that the plastic pots are easy to clean, especially if they build up nutrients and excess salts, you can just rinse them out, wipe them down, and you're good to go. But I've literally seen fabric pots that like get a really stained and stuff from excess nutrients and stuff on there. Mm, just, just something to consider. So all that said, fabric pots, plastic pots, what's best for me, what's best for you? Well, it depends on your setup, it depends on your preferences, and it depends on what you're looking for. For some people, fabric pots may be the better option. For some people, plastic pots may be the better option. With fabric pots, you got that air pruning, you got that quicker dry out, you may not be as likely to overwater. With plastic pots, it's a slightly slower dry out, you can retain the moisture content a little bit better, easier to transplant out of there, but you don't get that air pruning benefits. The roots can get root bound a little bit, you know, circle at the bottom of the pot. So you really got to weigh these options up. There are pros and cons to each and there's no right or wrong answer. You can grow fire in either one. Lately, I've been running fabric pots to add some extra drain holes and they've been running just fine. Just because I don't like the water flowing, just because I don't like watering and having that water run out of the side in the grow tent and stuff like that, it's really inconvenient. But that's why Grassroots Fabric Pots has actually made some banging fabric pots with some of that, with that moisture lock layer in the middle so a lot of that water does not fly out of the fabric pots. So if you guys want to check out some of the Grassroots Fabric Pots, definitely check those out and check out our Talking Law podcast episode with them so smash the like button for that guys drop it in the comments and let me know what sort of pots do you use do you use fabric plastic wheelbarrows buckets what the hell do you use man drop it in the comments i'm always interested to find out what you guys got to say and don't forget to check out diesel dog man cop a hoodie cop a t-shirt and support the fam this video is brought to you by mars hydro where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation 
They have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new 2-in-1 tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full-spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro Grow Lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANN THC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANNTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. Thank you guys so much and we see you on the next one. Peace fam.